How you doing? I'm Callan and this is Slapped Ham. Today we're looking at the eeriest ectoplasm photos ever taken. So hit that subscribe button and get ready for more creepy content just like this. Martha Baru, a medium whose most outspoken supporter was none other than Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, was one of the first mediums to become famous for her alleged ability to produce ectoplasm during a seance. According to mediums like Baru, ectoplasm could only be produced when the medium was in a trance-like state, communicating with the world of the dead. Typically, the ectoplasm would come from Baru's mouth, nose or ears, as seen in her ectoplasm photos. The room had to be very dark, as Baru believed that contact with light would cause the substance to disintegrate. However, many skeptics have asserted that keeping the sounds rooms dark was just a way to hide the fact that the entire process of producing ectoplasm was a scam. Some fraudsters used gauze or animal organs to mimic ectoplasm. However, definitive studies were never performed during Baru's famous seances. Three New York sisters, Leah, Maggie and Kate Fox were mediums who played an important role in the creation of the spiritualist movement. When they were young and living with their parents, strange things began to happen around the house. Most notably, family members would hear mysterious rappings on the wall. The three girls began trying to speak to the entity and allegedly succeeded. They called it Mr. Splitfoot, a nickname for the devil. Their parents were afraid for the children and sent them away from the house. Unfortunately, the haunting followed them, suggesting that it was the girls that were tied to the entity and not the house. They eventually tried to control their abilities, which led the trio to demonstrate their gifts publicly. The Fox sisters were among the first to conduct seances in front of paying audiences, a practice that gave rise to the earliest proponents of spiritualism. The girls were best known for producing unexplained rapping sounds during their seances. However, they were also able to produce ectoplasm, as seen in this bizarre photo. Helen Duncan was an infamous Scottish medium who practiced her craft in the early 1900s. In 1944, Duncan became the last person to be imprisoned under the British Witchcraft Act before it was repealed. Before her arrest, she was a well-known medium, and her speciality was ectoplasm photos. Many believers attended her seances, hoping for a chance to see her produce the eerie ectoplasm. Unlike some mediums, Duncan didn't insist on maintaining the mystery of her gifts with the dead. She often allowed experts to take ectoplasm photos, and even held a seance in a laboratory so that the process could be studied. Several experiments determined that Duncan's ectoplasm-producing powers were a fraud. Scientists who took samples of the ectoplasm determined that it was made from cheesecloth or egg mixed with chemicals. Despite these claims, Duncan continued to practice as a medium until her death in 1956. Mina Stinson Crandon was another medium known for producing ectoplasm photos, whose skills were lauded by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Her infamous career as a medium began when she claimed that she had contacted the spirit of her deceased brother, Walter Stinson. Stinson's most significant claim to fame was her attempt to win a prize, offered by the Scientific American magazine, to anyone who could prove that they manifested real paranormal abilities. During the investigations she underwent in order to try and claim the prize, she was repeatedly denounced as a fraud by the most well-known judge of the contest, Harry Houdini, a vocal skeptic of spiritualism. Stinson later underwent further investigation by the American Society for Psychical Research, during which she produced the ectoplasm rod shown in many of her ectoplasm photos. She warned the investigators that touching the ectoplasm rod could result in illness or death. Yet, the researchers insisted on examining the ectoplasm, and determined that it was an animal intestine, stuffed with cotton and stiffened with a metal wire. Minnie Harrison was born into a family of mediums. She had ten siblings, and every one of them claimed to have paranormal powers. 
However, only Minnie and her sister Agnes became successful practicing mediums. Minnie Harrison was known for going into trances during her seances and allowing the voices of the deceased to speak through her. Harrison's seances often produced objects such as flowers or photos. She never had any recollection of how they came to be when she awoke from her trance. During one seance, Harrison produced ectoplasm from her mouth, as shown in the photo. When she awoke, her son Tom showed her the photo. According to Tom, she was a bit disturbed to see the ectoplasm and felt queasy knowing that she had produced it while in a trance. No studies were ever performed on Harrison's ectoplasm, however, so there's no evidence to indicate whether she was legitimate or a fraud. T.G. Hamilton was a doctor and spiritualist who spent 15 years hosting seances in his home so that he could capture photographs of ghostly manifestations. He captured thousands of photos throughout his lifetime of what he believed to be ectoplasm produced by mediums during seances. One of the most famous examples of ectoplasm from Hamilton's collection is this photo of an unnamed medium producing a smoky substance from her mouth and nose. According to Hamilton, the substance is almost certainly ectoplasm. Skeptics, however, believe that the substance is most likely smoke that the medium inhaled then let slowly out of her mouth and nose. Some researchers have been able to replicate the photo using ordinary smoke, suggesting that this photo is indeed a fraud. Once again, we're looking at Martha Baroud, but this time under her alias, Ava Carrier. Ava Carrier, often known as Ava C, was known for producing ectoplasm during her seances. As with many other mediums known for materializing ectoplasm, Arthur Conan Doyle and Harry Houdini were publicly at odds over Carrier, with Doyle believing she was genuine while Houdini called her a fraud. Carrier's ectoplasm photos were famous, such as this photo of her producing ectoplasm from her face. In this photo, there seems to be a ghostly face materializing from the ectoplasm. Later research into these photographs seemed to determine evidence of wires supporting a piece of cloth, suggesting that the photos were fakes. Carrier was known for sometimes conducting her seances naked in an attempt to discredit rumors that she was a fraud. However, she was frequently accused of attempting to engage in inappropriate sexual activity with the guests of her seances, further tarnishing her reputation. As a staunch supporter of materialism mediums who claim to be able to produce ectoplasm, it isn't surprising that Arthur Conan Doyle began showing up in ectoplasm photos after his death. In this famous photo, medium Mary Marshall claims to be producing ectoplasm from her nose. Within the ectoplasm are images of Doyle's face. According to Marshall, Doyle's spirit visited her during seances, and his spirit manifested through the ectoplasm that she produced. Parapsychologist Dr. Thomas Glendenning Hamilton studied Marshall's powers and believed that her claims to be able to produce ectoplasm were genuine. However, later studies of her photos indicated that she produced the substance using cloth, tissue, and cutouts from photographs to produce images such as the one showing Doyle's face. Although most ectoplasm photos on the internet were taken almost a century ago when producing ectoplasm was a common practice among mediums, the phenomenon still exists today. One example of ectoplasm appearing in a modern photo is this picture here, taken recently at the Los Angeles County Fair. A man took this photo of his young son while spending time at the fair. Only later, when reviewing the photos, did he notice the strange object hovering in the air next to his hat. At first, he assumed that it was just a blur of light. However, the more he looked at it, the more he began to believe that the object looked too solid to be a light streak. He believes that a spirit must have been hovering near his son when the photo was taken, and left behind the ectoplasm that appears in the photograph. Before we get to that number one spot and take a look at a curious case of a modern medium claiming to be able to produce ectoplasm, 
remember to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon. That way you'll be in the loop about all our latest content. Spiritualism may be on the decline, but some modern mediums still produce ectoplasm photos that leave viewers scratching their heads. One modern medium known for producing ectoplasm photos is David Thompson. He currently practices his craft in Sydney, Australia. According to Thompson, he produces ectoplasm in his seances so that the spirits who visit can manifest physically and interact with the guests at the seances. The seances are held in total darkness and Thompson conducts them while gagged and bound to his chair using plastic cable ties to discredit any claims of fraudulent activity. However, skeptics have noted that plastic cable ties are fairly easy to escape from, so in the complete darkness of the room, it wouldn't be difficult for him to slip out of his bindings. In fact, fellow medium Gary Mannion once caught Thompson in the act of faking ectoplasm. In the middle of a seance, Thompson was caught pulling a cloth out of his pants to use as fake ectoplasm. If you want more scary photos, then check out these two links right there. Now remember you can submit your own content to us in a direct message on our Facebook page. If it's creepy enough, we may feature it in an upcoming episode. And that's it for me, I'll see you all next time. 